because I basically use hypothesis all day long. Um, when I put in a little proposal to do a session, um, it was because I use hypothesis in like weird ways and I'm actually like desperately looking for other people who use it in weird ways too. So I thought I'd show you um, some, of the, some of the weird ways um, that I use uh, hypothesis. So um, I have actually used hypothesis to plan two vacations. You laugh, I heard that. But what do you have when you go on vacation? You've got the hotel website and that restaurant your friend told you about and the bookstore you're trying to get to in the tour, and it goes on and on. And what do we do with these links? We email them to ourselves where they are basically useless. Um, so I had a conference uh, a few years ago in Barcelona, and I wanted to plan a trip, um, a, a few extra days in Barcelona. So you can see that um, I've continued to make uh, annotations here. Whoops, this is backwards for me. That um, uh, are around uh, Barcelona, but um, here, for example, is a restaurant uh, that somebody told me about that I definitely wanted to check out. Um, here is some information um, about the conference. I know it's tiny, but I wanted to learn about um, the locations in Barcelona, so I was planning a tour to go to the Picasso Museum and a Picasso walking tour, so I just dropped some images in, and I really could not make sense of all the different Gaudi attractions, so I went ahead and popped the, sorry, it's opposite for me, so I keep clicking, um, popped the pictures of the different attractions in so I'd be able to uh, keep track of them. I also put in um, links for different tours uh, and things to check out. So it really made the process of planning the trip um, a lot more straightforward. And if I hadn't been a sad person traveling by myself <laughs> from a conference, I could have shared this with others uh, who were going to travel with me. So that's my first example. God, I should use my computer because it's all like wonky. The second example I want to show you is how I used Hypothesis for my holiday shopping. Um, so we always see things on the web and we think that would be an awesome gift for so-and-so and you never find it again, right? It, it evaporates out of your head uh, as quickly as you come across it. So um, I wanted to do an experiment right before the holidays. So things that I found on the web, this was something that I was um, thinking about getting from my mom. Um, my son actually got one, so we're trying to decide if it, uh, my mom would want it or not. Um, this is a log to grow shiitake mushrooms that I got from my husband that I was thinking this morning. He still hasn't set up. Uh, and then uh, finally, um, I went ahead and popped in a bunch of um, t-shirts that I thought would be good uh, gifts for people. Um, now, when you're using Hypothesis on a dynamic search results page like um, some of these t-shirts, it's not going to take you back actually to the thing. But if you can get to the site and if you pop a picture in or if you pop more information about the thing, like um, the, the last example that's down here is um, uh, the Walt Washington Post gift guide. So I knew I wasn't necessarily going to find my way back to the actual thing. So I went ahead and put in the annotation the link or whether it was from Amazon, uh, the price and different things like that. So I'd be able to capture it um, and I could get back to it if I wanted to. Um, the last thing that I'm going to show you, and I have like many more, so if you want to find me later in the conference, you can do that, is how I used Hypothesis to organize my son's um, college tours this year. Some of you might have that uh, as a past experience or maybe a future. Um, so he narrowed it down. He's a music major. He plays the tuba. He narrowed it down to three places, University of Oregon, University of Connecticut, which is our home state, and University of Maine. So I used, um, I used Hypothesis when we were planning our trips. Um, while I was reading up on the different um, light sites, this is from the Wikipedia page for, for Eugene. Um, I tagged everything with the different schools. So for example, um, all, of the sc all of the things that I tagged about UConn are in here, School of Music info, um, check the other requirements for the, for the major, um, you know, student funding opportunities. I used this when we were looking for additional uh, scholarship <clears throat> options as well. Um, but the one that he ultimately decided on is the University of Maine. Um, and uh, so I had looked at the marching band site um, and the, the, some hotels on location and everything. So it really made the planning process a lot easier for me now that I've become accustomed to just annotating everything. Because how many times do we go back and recheck the same page um, over and over? Do I have like 30 more seconds? Um, let me show you. I realized in the, in the um, description that I said I was going to talk about how you could annotate um, conference attendee lists, which is something that I now um, swear by. So a couple years ago, actually a little more than a year ago, uh, Dan Whaley was going to um, an event and I was not attending, but um, let's see. 
it was an ASP, B, ASP bio, ASAP bio event, and this is how I can get back to it. And I had some, uh, some suggestions on folks that he should look up. In this one, let's just go back um, to the attendee list. Some of these online attendee lists don't stay up forever, so it's something to be mindful of. You can capture the information, make sure you're highlighting um, you know, enough to be able to get you back. So because um, Dan, I wasn't there to point out these people, I went ahead and grabbed their images from LinkedIn or from their websites, and I put some little notes, and I just went in earlier today and edited because I didn't want you know, this, ever you guys to see the things that I was necessarily saying about all the people that were on here. Um, but it's a great way if you're traveling as a group or something that you could do. And what do you do with those paper attendee lists? They come out of your bag, they go in a pile, eventually they get recycled, and they're basically useless to you. So this is one way you can actually keep those lists um, useful. So that's it for me. I'm here all week. Uh, <laughs> find me. And probably some other things I could talk about.